Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Creating with Gorilla Art. Today we are making Dobby. Dobby's one of my favorite characters from Harry Potter. He's just a fun, lovable, just cute little character. And I just thought it would be so much fun to teach you guys how to draw him and then how to paint this very beautiful, magical background. You guys ready to get started? I know I am. Let me tell you about the supplies you're gonna need. We've got our watercolor palette. Mine is well used. We're gonna need some oil pastels here. I've got brown green, white, black. We're going to need Sharpie, pencil, perhaps you need an eraser. Also, I gave you two um, watercolor papers. We're going to use the bumpy side up. And you're going to need a brush. This is a round tip brush. You're going to need a water bowl, a paper towel, and then lastly, I've included these tiny little three-dimensional stickers. They're foam stickers. And you'll see, we're going to do something really fun with that. Oh, and I almost forgot, you are going to need a pair of scissors. Glad I remembered. So why don't you gather up your supplies and meet me back here and let's get started. In your lesson plan, I did put a directed draw with step-by-step -step, um, how to draw Dobby, but I'm going to show you how to do it right now. And so you can follow along with me and use the other one for reference if you like. So we're using a pretty big paper. It's obviously bigger than the reference paper that uh, was included. So you've got to take into account that you want Dobby to be a little bigger than that paper. Um, here's our paper. It'll be something like that. So this is a pretty small Dobby. We want them to be a little bigger on the paper. So I'm going to do it very similar, but just a little bigger. Now we're going to start, if you were to divide your paper into threes, you'd have a line right about there and then another one here. Okay. So we want to do the top of Dobby's head right about there. In fact, if you had a ruler at home and you wanted to make sure you got it right, let's see. It's going to be a little over five inches from the top down, but you don't have to use a ruler. You can kind of guesstimate and it'll just be just fine. We're going to start by drawing the top of his head. I'm going to be drawing a little harder. In fact, I'll press harder than that. But you need to draw in what I call sketch mode. Sketch mode is when you use, you, you don't hold your pencil very tight. You hold it very loose and you draw and press very gently. That yeah, way, if you make any mistakes, it's super easy to erase. So like I said, I'm going to press a little harder just so it shows up on um, the camera. And I'm just going to start off, we're going to be drawing kind of a rounded square and I'm just starting off with the top of that square right there. And you can see where it falls on the canvas. Now I'm going to come on down. Like I said, we're doing kind of a rounded square and it does not have to be perfect. Give you a close up of that. Oops, let me get past the light. There you go. It's not perfect by any means. Next, I think we're going to draw in the ears, and the ears are pretty big. And they kind of slope down with a little point. And I think it's fun if they're not exactly the same which would be they're not symmetrical or asymmetrical because even on us, our ears are not the exact same. Sometimes they're a little higher or lower. Our face is not the exact same. So I think it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
Now we're going to draw in the nose and the nose is kind of funny because it's really a side profile of the nose. It's as if his face was slightly turned and we're going to start right up here and we're going to draw this little shape and I, I was kind of laughing after I did the little sample because it, to me, it looks like a foot. <laughs> Let me get closer up. See that? Do you see the foot? It's kind of funny. So easy little point, kind of a slope right there and then it curves over. Now we're gonna draw the eyes. So from the top of that um, nose part, we're just gonna put in kind of a rounded square. In fact, I'm gonna make mine a little bigger. See, and when I say rounded, it means that it doesn't have those sharp corners that, <clears throat> excuse me, that a square would have. Now we're going to do one that's this side of the eye. And we want it to be slightly bigger because if his face were really turned a little bit, that eye on this side would be a smidge. It would appear a little bigger. We're not going to have it crazy bigger, but just a little bigger. Just a little bit. I'm going to move this paper towel. It's bugging me. Okay. Easy enough. Hopefully you guys can see it. The light. Sometimes it's hard. Let me check something. No. All right, so now we're gonna start putting in the little details of the eyes. So we're gonna continue that rounded square. And I want his eyes, the irises, to be pretty big. Now what's different is this one's on its own, but this one's gonna be kind of coming from his nose. Do you see that? Let's look real close so you can see that. And you'll be able to see it on the sample step by step. So we have those and now we're going to do some pretty big pupils. Make these a little bigger there. Okay. And we are going to draw in some little circles that are going to be the reflection in the eyes and this will be pretty big on this one and a little smaller there bigger smaller and i am going to erase the inside of those circles so that we can just do them white might have to redraw them in a little bit looking good. Now we'll put the face in, the smile in, I mean. Let's give you a close-up so you can really see. Alright, so now we're just putting in some details. I'm going to draw in like a little inner, the inner ear a little bit. And then a little line like that. Now the top of his head does have a slight bump so I am going to kind of erase it right there. I may not have put that in the um, step by step but you'll see it here and it won't matter if you do it or not. I just put a little bit of a bump and did some hair. Cute. He also has some eyebrows, so we can put that in. And I know I forgot that, but that's okay, right? I forgot it in the step-by-step. -step. Now he's gonna have kind of a skinny neck. And we're gonna start off from this point here. And you don't want it too long, okay? Cause he's not like a emu or something with long, long neck, but you want it just, just that nice amount. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that he's got kind of 
his neck kind of comes down a little bit. And then in the background here, we're going to do his shoulders. And I didn't have them flare out, if you notice. They kind of came, you know, out, 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 and then straight down. Because Dobby's got these skinny little arms. So we don't want it too, you know, too much. Now, his neck will have some dimension in there. So we're just going to do... You could feel in yourself, but right at your neck you should have a little indent right there and that's what we're going to do on dobby now this is the fun part here okay we are going to draw a little circle and then kind of a almost if, if we were doing a leaf or a petal that's going to be a knot and we're going to do that on both sides And from that, this is going to be like his, his clothes, you know, those ratty old clothes that he has to wear, right? I'm going to do a straight line kind of coming down like that. And then we'll have a few little lines because this, this shows the kind of folds and wrinkles in his little outfit. Maybe we'll add a hole to it. I don't think I did that before, but he needs a hole, right? Because he was pretty, he was pretty ratty. And that's our Dobby. That's how to draw him. Now we're going to have fun adding some shading and watercoloring him and details. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. So this is a good time to get caught up with drawing Dobby. And then when you're all caught up, meet me back here. Pause me and then meet me back here. Welcome back. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our Sharpie and we're only going to trace a couple of things with his Sharpie. And what I want to trace is his eyes. So I'm going to trace his eyes here. And then I do want to trace his mouth. And then the rest we're going to do with watercolor and some other fun things. So I grabbed my watercolor here and we are going to be using um, the skin color. Just that one right there. It's just below that yellow orange third over got my water bowl and we're just going to be painting him and I've dipped it in water and now I'm going to just kind of twist my brush see how I'm doing kind of a little circular motion and we're just going to paint him up we're going to be putting a lot of fun um, details in with other things but this is good for now I just wanted to get that skin color in Go right over the pencil, totally fine. You can even go over the um, mouth and it's fine. All right. Just getting that first color. And guess what? We're gonna be cutting him out so you don't even have to paint inside the lines. Just getting it on. How easy is this? Now I am painting around that black. I don't want to go inside his eye. Okay. More. Easy, easy, easy. Oop, I almost forgot this arm down here. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Now I want to do some little shading, some darker parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this brown over here. I've dipped in this one and now I'm, do you see this one right here? Up here. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to do his ears, the inner ears with this darker one. And I am kind of painting kind of randomly because you want to, I like the texture that it gives when you do that. Coming in right here. And then there's this other one right down here. See that one? Right down in the corner. It's almost a gray. I'm going to come in and put it on his on his neck and maybe a little bit down here. Just to add some shadows and I'm gonna re-wet it a little bit and come over, soften it up. You don't wanna see any direct sharp lines. What we're doing is just correct, um, adding like some shading in there. Okay, so I'm gonna do is down here, right? Wherever you think that there might be a little shading, definitely under your chin would be a little shading. Maybe below his ears, maybe even like a little bit below his mouth, his nose, I mean. Get a little more shading there. Ooh, I grabbed some even darker brown just to, just to add that shading in there. So notice that I'm just kind of putting it wherever I think there might be some shading. Sometimes I use my finger and I tap it. Go back over it. Maybe under his eyes, just a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to see lines. See, that's starting to look like a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately re re, re <laughs> I can't say that, re oh my gosh, re-wet my brush and I'm tapping it just to tap it in a little bit so it doesn't look like lines. We don't want to have lines on his nose, anything, okay? You don't want to see lines. It's looking good. And then right where the, those holes would be, we better put a little skin color in there, right? I'm gonna make it real dark skin color. looking good. We still got some other things to do to really give it that look that I'm going for. I think even his nose. Now see how that has a line? We're going to soften that up with a clean wet brush. Soften, soften. And it does. It just softens that up real nice. liking that a lot that is a lot oh you know what I'm noticing I didn't do you guys I noticed I didn't outline that black on that one <laughs> I did this one but not that that's okay if you forgot or if you even noticed what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, blow dry this now really good let me give you a close-up so you can see the shadows see the shadowing in there doesn't that look good so it's a good time to pause me, get caught up, then blow dry it or take a break and let it dry. But it should be dry completely before you go to the next step. So see you back here in a second. All right. Welcome back. So I got mine mostly dry and it's kind of funny when, you, when you're when you drying uh, watercolor. Sometimes it sprays around, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to take that time and fix this now. And I think I am gonna draw on his eyebrows with the black Sharpie. And I'm gonna come in here like this and put in those little knots. I'm gonna give you a close up. Let's see. Oop, 
There. See what I did there? Put those little lines in there. Okay. Now we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do some smudging and have a little fun. I'm using my brown. And I'm just going to draw this in. I'm gonna color it in, but you don't need to press very hard at all because we're going to be smearing this. Now we're using oil pastel and it is softer than like um, a crayon. And you're gonna see how cool it does with this smudging technique. And now I'm gonna put this black right where the wrinkles are. Kind of tracing those. And I will put some brown in there. You can almost watercolor this, might have been better to do that, but that's okay. I meant the knots. And I am coming in a little heavier by the black. Okay, a little heavier on the edges. Now I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm just going to smear it, and it gives the coolest, coolest look. Get a little closer. Try and cover it all, but you don't notice that there's, you could still see the white through it. I am being careful not to go over the little um, holes. Look at that. That I just love the way it looks when it smears. I love using oil pastels. If you've taken my class, you know that I love it cuz I use I use it all the time. That and chalk pastels is a favorite. Ooh, look at that. Look at the little lines in there. Cool. I know I didn't say it, but I feel like you should have gotten this. I am going to add a little yellow to it because I feel like if it's old, maybe it's kind of yellowed. So I'm just putting in a little, a little yellow in it. The more little definition like that shows texture and little um, dimension. I like that. A little yellow is good. Very nice. Not fun. Let me give you a close up of that. Not pretty. And I am going to use the brown to kind of trace out his body. And I am trying to use the edge. It's really better to do the edge. You get a skinnier, you get a skinnier thing on that. in there too just a little bit okay. definitely want to come in and get his nose in there oops that's all right and around his face that's looking great very nice okay so I am going to smear this just a little bit though, and I'm not going back and forth. I'm just following the line. So we don't want to smear it too much. Okay. 
and it does help to kind of move it. I like to, when I'm smearing this, I like to start and pull towards me. See how I'm pulling towards me? Instead of, I'm not like pushing up, I'm pulling down. And I am going to smear this one down here just a little more because we're showing that shadow. Definitely turn your paper. Dragging towards me. liking the way this is coming out. So I do have a, a wipey next to me and I'm just going to clean my finger with it. Now we're going to come in and we're going to do the green eyes. Careful not to color inside those white circles. Now we'll use our black for the inside, his pupils. You could do this with Sharpie too if you wanted, but works well. Notice how I moved the paper just to help me out a little bit, get a little closer. It does have some hair, might have trouble cutting around that, but maybe not. Cute. Now we've got the white. Okay, so what we're going to do is I am going to use the white to just kind of go in the middle. I don't think I'm going to do around there, but I am going to add some highlights. See if it even shows up. Where his nose is just a little white it doesn't show up too much but it's there a few, few little spots I'm adding a little shading there remember like where his chin would be so the shading happens just to repeat this, the shading happens where the sun doesn't hit or a light source. So under your chin would be darker, under your nose is darker, maybe the ears is darker. What do you think of Dobby? <laughs> I think he's pretty cute. So this is a great time to pause the video, get caught up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut him out. And I actually am going to show you a little trick on cutting. I've shown this before in other uh, videos, but can't hurt to show you guys again. I'll use scissors probably like the ones you guys have. Now, and so many people will take their scissors and they try to cut it and they make their arms go all weird. This is how I cut things. This is the easiest way. And even a lot of adults don't know this, okay? I like to hold it. You want a good, good grip with this hand, okay? And, but still enough that you can spin it through through your thumb, you know? And I'm gonna come in here like this. Sometimes I cut things just to get them out of the way. Like this, this annoys me, it's in my way. So I'm gonna get rid of it. And then I'll move it. And it's better just to move your paper to get you at better angles. See how I'm moving the paper around? It's not, this hand isn't moving, it's this one moving. There you go, cut that out. Move my hands. The paper, I am moving the paper. 
and even grabbing it in a different area if you need to. Now I'm going to come in and cut those out a little more detailed later. I Sometimes I just skim over it and come back later and do detail. I do that with a lot of, if you have a lot of detail to cut out, I like to cut the bulk of the paper off first and then go back. That's just me. And cutting is a really important skill. I highly recommend you get good at it. Just your, it's called your fine motor skills. There, see? Now I'm gonna cut this out. Easy enough, right? So let's clean up our area. Now this is fun watercolor, okay? Watercolor paper. If I were you, I wouldn't throw it away. You can make some other little fun things on it. Maybe you make some fun little Dobby cards or do something else. This is nice watercolor paper. Cut it, cut it out so that it's nice and maybe make a few things. But definitely, even these ones you could save. These little tiny, tiny ones, eh, I'd probably throw them away. But big things like that, that could be cut up. I'm all about using what you have and, you know, reusing things. So this is the last step. We're going to be making the background for our Dobby. And we're going to be coloring this. And, oops, I dropped my Dobby. Here we go. And then putting him on, on there later. Now this background is, I'm going to show you some fun techniques on watercoloring. Okay, so, but you can do, you can do any background you want. So my suggestion is kind of watch what I do and then make it your own, meaning add your own colors, that sort of thing. One of the things I forgot to tell you that you are going to need clean that off, is table salt. Okay. I forgot about this. It's just regular salt. If you have Epsom salt, you can use that as well. This is probably Epsom salt or rock salt. Doesn't matter. So we got our table salt and what we're going to do is something called a wet on wet technique. Now you probably only got a brush um, this big, which is fine. You can totally use it. But if you happen to have in your own personal stash, like, let's see, like a bigger brush. Hold on, let me show you a sample. It's easier with a bigger brush. Even bigger, it's fine. But I'm not going to use the big one, I'll use the little one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a wet on wet technique. I'm going to grab my water bowl so it's a little closer. And what that means is we're going to wet our paper. Okay, and we want it, what we're going for is kind of a swirly, whirly background. And I'm working in sections. So I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm only gonna wet this. Let's get our salt handy. Oops. And, okay, wet my brush. I'm gonna start off, I think I'm gonna do the corners here, real dark blue. Like this. And I'm kind of doing this little motion like, like that. Almost, you can almost pounce it. And what that does is it swirls it. I'm not brushing it. I'm gonna dip it in the purple. I even like it to kind of swim around. I like that. Now what I'm gonna do while it's wet, it's important. I'm gonna just sprinkle. I'm not pouring that salt like crazy. I'm sprinkling it. Important to do that while it's wet. And I definitely, I wanna add some green. So I'm just kinda of doing, it's gonna be a very, almost a tie-dye look. We're gonna say it's a magical look. Little that, and this is all right 
in the you know the corner I added a little pink. Now I'm going to re-wet. Oh, I, you know what? Before I go on, I'm going to add a little salt right where, right where it's wet. Get it wet here. By getting it wet, it, it really gives that tie-dye look. And so, like I said, it's called a wet on wet technique. So this is wet watercolor going onto wet paper. That's why it's called wet on wet. I'm gonna add a little more blue because I like it to be rich, and dark. Okay, more water, a little more water right there. Purple. And while I'm doing that, I am gonna add some of those salts. And the salt gives it a chemical reaction really cool and we're gonna do our green doesn't have to be the same either you know you can just move it around add a little more salt I like it I like the darkness so that's why I am kind of going back over it over here I'm gonna do some lighter purple maybe some mix it in with a little bit of pink Pounce, 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 salt. You don't see too much the salt reaction until it dries. And when it dries, then you'll go, oh my God, that's cool. All right, so re-wetting it. See, I'm doing corner to corner. Now I'm gonna come over and do this corner. Getting it completely wet. So it takes a little longer to dry because it's wet. But that's all right. We got time. I'm going to come in with my oil pastel and I'm just going to do some little magical stars and the way I do my stars I'm going to show you let me let me move this for a second so you can really see everybody maybe has seen me do stars I do a plus sign and then a smaller crisscross inside and I'm going to do that all over and I am going to do different sides, sizes, I should say. I think it's just a little whimsy, a little magical, right? Oops. Let me add a little bit to that because it got wonky looking. When that salt dries, it's going to be cool. All right, now is a good time to get caught up and let this dry. Walk away, let it dry. It's probably going to take, you know, 15 minutes or so. Mine's really damp, as yours might be. And maybe you can come in and just damp the real wet spots, but don't damp too much, okay? What this also does with the paper towel is it has a really cool texture that I do like. You can damp a little bit, but don't damp too much. All right. So why don't you let this dry completely? 
and then meet me back here when it's all dry and we'll catch you on the next step. Okay, well, welcome back. So we're gonna do just a couple more things um, to finish this up. I am looking for my little stickers. I've lost them already. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna fold this over and I'm going to peel off and put one in each corner. And what this does is it kind of pops him off the page. And I love that. Okay, that should be enough. And then it still has the papers on them. All you have to do is peel those off like this. Now you don't want to put it on a wet paper. So I hope that you let your paper dry real nice. I actually have this idea. You know what? What we might do before we put this on, you'll see. Really to kick it up a notch. I'm going to put him to the side because I have this thought before we attach him. Here's my thought. We've got that glitter that I gave you guys and I say let's use it. So what we need to do is we need to get our glue that you got. Now I didn't say this earlier, but we're, um, you know, we're, we're trying fun things. So remember that glue mixture that we made before where we added a little water to it? That's what we're going to do again, but we want it real watery. So I've got a lot of water in there. I'm going to grab my glue brush. I'm going to mix it up. And I am going to brush glue on here. This whole thing. And you know what? You do have to do this quick. Because it will dry real quick. So I'm going to do it as fast as I can. I think it'll just be really magical. I might have to, I don't think I made enough glue. Okay, so my paper has dried completely. I can touch it, it's not sticky anymore. And it does take a solid, I mean, you know, an hour minimum. And then I've got all the little things on the back, those little foam stickers. And they have, you gotta make sure that you take off the little paper that's on top of them so that they're sticky. And then we're gonna just place it down. And that is our art project. Isn't that cute? I think Dobby came out so cute and I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure that you send me pictures of your completed art project. You can send them through email. You can tag me on Instagram, Gorilla Art Studio, or join my Facebook group, Creating with Gorilla Art, because I have lots of other people on there and they share all their artwork on there and I love to see it. And I hope the rest of your day is just magical. Bye everyone.